Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they're the center of the universe and they can do what they want when they want. And in today's episode, a spoiled, entitled Karen practically invades OP's house and she refuses to leave. Guys, I hope you enjoy the tales today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss these crazy stories. So I used to be a stock car racer, but I quit when I was hit and slammed into a wall and fractured a vertebrae. Every Friday, we would race and then stop at a 24-hour restaurant that had lots of parking, so we can park the truck and car hauler and still see it. The restaurant is also half windows, so it's easy to see your car or truck with trailer no matter where you park. So one fine day, we drive to that restaurant for dinner. I have a handicap placard, but there's a truck with a boat parked across all five handicap spaces, and I call the cops. Again, I have a handicap placard, and it ticks me off when people do this. So after we give our order, a police officer arrives and cue the drama. The boat owner observes the officer outside and goes outside to meet him. Now we couldn't hear the conversation, but there was a lot of hand-waving and angry screams by the boat owner. The officer then hands him some paper and departs. The boat owner then returns to the restaurant and the guy's ticked. Like, I storm the capital kind of rage. The guy starts going off at the restaurant employees who assure him that they didn't call. Now the guy doesn't accept that and he's screaming at a bunch of teenage employees. So that's when I stand up and said, I called them. The guy then turned his rage on me. Now I grew up with a father who had anger issues, so this guy was nothing new. I've learned to lean into these things and call him out for being an entitled jerk, who thought giving his boat special treatment was okay. I then pointed out the spaces that we used to park our race car, perfectly visible, so why be an ass and take five handicap spaces? The guy called me a bunch of names, and then his three boating buddies stepped in and said it was time to leave. It turns out, the guy got five tickets, one for each parking spot, at $250 each. Maybe next time, his gray matter will remind him to be a better person and to avoid $1,250 in fines. That made for an interesting meal. Guys, talk about karma hitting the guy full force, right? And oh boy, was that ever an expensive lunch. Like, taking up five normal parking spots is already such an a-hole move, but five handicapped parking spots? My goodness, that is like next-level a-hole behavior. And honestly, I only wish the tickets were more than $250 each. I really do. So this happened to me yesterday. I work for a small pizza place in a small town. The hours are the same every single day, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you're still eating at closing time, then of course, you can relax and finish eating while we clean up. On Friday night at 9.15, I unlock the door for a customer to leave. At the same time, Karen walks up and she tries to come in. I nicely explain that we're closed and apologize for the inconvenience. And this is the part where it gets fun. The woman stares at me like I'm stupid or speaking a foreign language, and she starts complaining and saying that there's people still inside eating, and that means we're still open and we will serve her. I explain to her that they got here before 9pm and they're just finishing their food and leaving right away. At this point, she goes crazy saying, I know the owner, and if you don't serve me, I'll have you fired tomorrow. Don't even bother coming into work tomorrow if you don't let me inside. My coworker then walks up to hear what's going on. I asked him if the ovens were turned off, to which he replied, yes. I then tried one more time to explain this to Karen, and she starts berating me, telling me that I'm nothing, that I'm a lowly minimum wage worker who gets paid pennies to what she gets paid, and now she's really going to call the owner and get me fired. She then adds that he'll also have me arrested too, since he has cop buddies and he used to be a cop. Now I know what's going on. The old owner used to be a cop, and he sold the restaurant in January. I nicely tell her again, no, and close and lock the door. But before leaving, she angrily marches back to her car, grabs a piece of paper, and writes, F you, you're fired. And then she sticks it on the window with her gum. She then peels out of the parking lot fast. Needless to say, I never heard anything about it. And I know it's not a great story, but I finally got to post something related to an entitled Karen that happened to me. Guys, I just love how people get so excited to share their Karen encounters with everyone. And yeah, this woman's in her own little world, guys. Like, even if she did know the owner and the guy was a cop, no one's getting arrested for denying you service, Karen, especially after closing hours. 
And seriously, some people really think that they have so much power over employees if they know the owner. Like, it's ridiculous. This happened last night, and I'm now in a good enough spot to actually post this. I'm a professional driver. As such, on the roads in the US, there's different truck stops throughout the country that has a pay-to-park system. Usually about 10-20% to of the lot is marked off reserve, with each space running from $15 to $25. The truck stop where this took place had parking for $17, which is relatively cheap for a guaranteed parking spot. The spots are also reserved for 24 hours, starting at 4 p.m. local time and extending to 3 p.m. the following afternoon. I knew that I would have a late night delivery, so I came to the truck stop around 3.30 and paid for a reserved parking spot. I told the manager on duty that I had a delivery up the road that night, and I would be back once the delivery was completed, but should still be able to clear out the spot by the next afternoon. She told me that this was okay, and she would mark the spot as sold when I left. That way, if someone else comes in trying to reserve that spot, she could consult her notes and deny the sale. So 11.15 rolls around, and I take off for my delivery. I don't get out of that facility until 2.30 a.m., so I groggily drive back to the truck stop to reclaim my paid-for spot, only to find that all the reserved parking spots are full. I call the manager on duty, and after giving her my info, inform her that all the spots are full, and that someone's parked in a spot and hasn't paid for it. With that, she sends her other employee out to start checking trucks. The culprit was from a company that's known for their bright orange trailers, and he was a company driver. The employee starts banging on his door to inform him that he's parking illegally, and he has to move. Meanwhile, I can see the commotion from my mirror. The driver answers the door with a bottle of Heineken in one hand and a joint in the other. I decide to roll down the window to hear the commotion, and I hear the employee tell the driver to either move or he'll get his towing company and police involved. Now this driver is flat out irate that someone had the audacity to tell him where he can and can't park, so he slams the door on the employee, threatening him. The employee then calls police and a tow company, and the police show up first. Now I had worked for the company before, so I know their policies, and more importantly, what they can and can't have in their trucks. Alcoholic beverages are not allowed in the cab. Anything that's not a cigarette or a cigar and a lighter is also not allowed. The biggest thing, however, is a pew-pew of any kind is absolutely not allowed, and especially not allowed loaded. This driver had all of that and some other not-so-legal substances in his cab, so the guy was hauled away in handcuffs. His truck was hauled away on a wrecker. I made a call after the commotion died down to the company's safety director and informed them that their rig would be in an impound lot and their driver's going to jail over the not-so-legal stuff he had in his truck. She thanked me and said he'll definitely lose his job, especially over the alcohol and the other not-so-legal stuff. I guess the guy played the screw around and find out card and it bit him in his career. Guys, I don't feel sorry for that entitled idiot at all. And I'm glad he got his truck hauled away and that he was fired for the sake of everyone's safety on the road. And hey, at least the guy will never have to pay for parking again, right? So I just bought a house last year. My mom lives with me because of health issues and when she found out that my sister, who's 22 years old, got kicked out of her apartment, my mom asked me to let her come live with us. Now, something about my sister and I is we were never close. When my sister moved in, me and mom were told that she would find a new place to live and work to move back out. And that was the biggest lie ever. She's been living in my house for six months now, and it's been a nightmare, and she's refusing to leave. Every rule I set, she breaks, and here's a list of things she does that I hate. Number one, she trashes my house. She leaves garbage everywhere and then she yells at me to clean it because she's the guest and she should not be cleaning. Number two, she never picks up her dog poop. The dog kept going on my neighbor's driveway and when the neighbor complains, my sister yelled at him to pick it up himself. My neighbor's now starting to hate me. Number three, she would eat all my food and complain that I never buy anything good to eat, leaving no food for me and my mom. Number four, when I cook or mom cooks, she'll complain that it's gross. And then she demands that we go buy something else that she likes. When we ask her why she doesn't cook dinner because me and mom have two jobs, she starts yelling at us that she's not cooking dinner as a guest. Number five, she lost her job a month ago and she started demanding that I give her money. 
When I told her I can't because most of my money goes to bills, groceries, and the mortgage, she'll scream that she needs to have money to buy her expensive makeup and face wash because she can't look like trash like us. And number six, she attacks me and my mom all the time. My mom doesn't want her to go to jail again, so she'll take it, and then my sister will laugh when mom has a breakdown. Now, my mom and I don't want to kick her out, because we don't know what will happen to her, and most of our family want nothing to do with her. But it's getting worse, to the point where I want to kick her out, we don't know what else to do. I'm starting to not like coming home, and I love my home, but with my sister, she's starting to make me want to sell it, to get a new one, without all the memory of hell here. Yeah, all I can say is OP needs to throw her sister out, guys. Like, not only is the sister a leech, she's destroying the place. And she's also causing so much stress and trauma for OP and her mom, to the point that they don't even want to be in their own home. And that sucks. Honestly, I think the sister needs some time homeless to realize that she's ultimately responsible for herself. And in my opinion, guys, being someone's safety net will never ever end, unless you make the decision to end it. And if OP keeps waiting, it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse. And one more thing, family or not, cops need to be called on her. Especially if she's constantly attacking OP and mom. Let her go back to jail and let her learn the hard way. Alright, so on a day I was off work, I was craving a sandwich at lunchtime on a hot day. So I traveled to the nearest subway and I got in line. As soon as it was noontime, there was quite a few people in line, and as many places, they seemed understaffed. The young teenage girl was the only one to make sandwiches, while the manager was ringing up the orders when not helping with condiments. So while waiting in line at Subway, with like six others, I was behind a group of three old ladies, the Karens of the story. Now while not the spitting image of most Karens, you could tell from how they talked with each other that they were the kind of women with resting bitch faces. So it came time to have their sandwiches made, and of course, every one of them wanted custom sandwiches. They also kept complaining that this meat or that cheese is a little too much, or I want it not toasted, but then toasted after the sandwich was made, or I want to switch the bread. The women went on and on. It was annoying, as the one girl tried to keep up, but she was getting frustrated and stressed. The manager then steps over trying to help, but with these women, they were not happy with anything. After 15 minutes of making the lady sandwiches, it finally came time to pay. Down to the register they went, as my meatball sub was quickly made and passed down. I'm a plain bread, meat, and sauce, and a little ranch. So I wait behind them. The manager then rings up the old bats, and when the toll comes out to around 30-ish dollars, they went off again. Now I'm not saying they started to squeal, but they did. They were saying, we waited forever to be served, and then you too couldn't even make a sandwich. We want it free, they whined. At this point, I was fed up with it, and after it continued for a few minutes, I stepped up and said that I would take the sandwiches, add it to mine. Hearing me say that, the old crows grinned and thought they had one. So I paid for the four sandwiches, and I added my drinks and chips. After my card was approved, and I was handed my receipt, I picked up my newly four-bought sandwiches and got my drink. As I started paying, the old ladies went to sit at a table. After getting my drink, I head to the door to leave with my food in hand. And I hear, um, excuse me, you have our food still, are you not gonna bring it to us? With receipt in my hand, I hold it up and said, nope. I paid my money for my food, and I will take them back to work. As I headed to the door, this got the old bitches to get up and chase me out the door, which I didn't mind. The staff has had enough of them, and I can take some abuse from crazies. They were screaming, you need to give us our food, or we will call the cops and have you arrested. Now I knew this was dumb, but as I said, nothing better on a day off. I tell her, please be my guest. I assure you they won't be doing anything about this. It's at that point, one of them starts to pull out a phone and call, while the others began telling me how I must love stealing from old ladies, and how they knew this person or that person, and I would be in jail for a long time for stealing from them. Well, they called, and I stood there not saying a word, which is hard to do while being belittled. But I had the store crowd watching by this point. Soon enough, a few units pulled in, and as they got out, a look of confusion crossed their faces. The officer says to me, uh, are you the guy they called about because you matched the description? I tell him, yeah, they called you on me. 
The officer says, so you stole their sandwiches and demanded money from them? I say to him, well, look into it. Ask the clerk and the manager who paid for the sandwiches and then look at this receipt. That's when one officer walked inside, spoke with the store manager, and watched the video, while the other officer listened to the women insinuate that I took the food from them. The shock was priceless once the other officer came outside and confirmed that I paid for them. And the store also wanted the three trespassed for a disturbance. I was released to leave, but I decided to go back inside to eat, making sure to smile at the ladies while I sat down. The three ladies were banned, and they left with an even more sour look. And the manager brought over a cookie, telling me it was on her. Wow guys, Karens will call police on anything, won't they? 911, he stole my $9 sandwich. Ridiculous. Like, they always say to respect elders, but man, when you got people like that group of Karens, nah, they get no respect. Many years ago, I used to work nights, and I shared a cubicle workspace with someone who worked days, and we'll call her Karen. So Karen apparently thought that the entire cubicle belonged to her, and nobody was allowed to sit there. Everything was labeled with her name, and she would lock the desk. I had to get a separate file cabinet, just so I could store my files and stuff, as she was not willing to play nice and share. She also had little knickknacks all over the desk in inconvenient areas that made it difficult to work, so I would simply move them to the monitor stand out of the way. I'm also short and she's tall. Every day, I would have to adjust the seat, the monitor, and phone to be comfortable. Fast forward a few weeks of doing the routine of moving the figures, adjusting the workspace, etc, etc, I come in and there's a giant piece of paper taped to the monitor, with an aggressive note saying, Night person. Do not move my stuff. It's not yours to touch. And stop adjusting the seats and monitor because it's not ergonomically correct. This is my workspace and nobody should touch it. Blah, blah, blah. I showed my manager the letter and how the desk was when I came in, and then again after adjusting it to my needs. My manager laughed and said, she's crazy. Continue to adjust it to better suit your needs, and she can do the same when she comes in. So with that, I decide to teach her a lesson. I start moving everything into random configurations, daily, for a couple of weeks. I did things like moving the monitor in front of the desk, and everything behind it was stacked up like a pyramid. I also unplugged the phone from the base and put the mouse in its place. I left the seat upside down, etc. I also recruited workers to get in on the fun, helping to redesign each new layout. It reminded me of what Jim used to do to Dwight in the office, but we didn't go as far as putting her stapler in jello. My friend that worked days two cubicles over said that Karen would stomp past her desk every single day to complain to the manager about the night person who was destroying her stuff and making it difficult to work. Karen conveniently left out the fact that her entitled self had left a giant note on the monitor starting all of this. After about a week of her complaining, the manager asked if anything was missing or broken, and she said, well, no, but... Tired of her BS, they cut her off and said to simply readjust to her needs and only to come to them if anything was vandalized. It was fun to hear from my friend how hot and bothered she was, not knowing what she would find each morning. I never saw another note from her, but about a year later, she was well and told to move to nights. She was telling every one of us about the situation, of course playing the victim, and asked if we had any idea who it could have been so she could get them in trouble. The cubicle was empty because I had been promoted and I no longer sat at her desk by this time. I guess she expected the person to get thrown under the bus because the day crew was cutthroat. Little did she know, the night crew was ride or die. We all played dumb and started laughing the second she walked outside. No, the cubicle does not belong to you. Others are allowed to use it and adjust items accordingly, you entitled carrot. Guys, I love this so much, and I love the fact that nobody snitched and said it was OP when the Karen wanted to know who was messing with her stuff. And this person says, just ask her how much she paid for her cubicle and chair. So my wife, a 29-year-old female, and I, a 27-year-old male, do well financially. So we decided to have our fourth child. Every single pregnancy we've been through, my wife has been a complete nightmare. 
Some things I can deal with, like waking up to the sound of her puking her guts out every morning, but when she starts demanding that I go to the store every day to get her snacks, or set up her foot bath thingy because her feet are swollen, I get a little impatient over how entitled she is. The thing is, I work way longer hours than her, in a much more physically demanding profession. I'm a plumber and she's an engineer, so I think we're putting an equal amount of effort into this baby. And it's not like I don't help around the house either. She does all the cooking, dishes, but I do the laundry, take out garbage, and mow the lawn. We pay someone to do the floors and bathrooms weekly. My mother-in-law comes over to help with the kids because she says I'm useless. And while I do appreciate the help, I'm sick of her crap. Just because I want one or two hours of video games to myself a day instead of cleaning up messes in the kitchen doesn't mean I'm useless. So this all came to a head yesterday, when I was playing video games, and my wife screamed at me from the kitchen to get off my ass and entertain our twins so she could focus on meatloaf for dinner. I then made a dumb joke about how this is the third meatloaf we're eating this week, and she lost her crap. She told me how I have no sympathy for the fact that she's pregnant, and I should be taking on more of her chores, since I can't breastfeed. But then I reminded her that I still work a lot more hours than her, so I think we're basically both pregnant. Hearing me say that, she got really quiet, and she's only spoken to me regarding the kid since. Now I don't think I'm wrong, but I'll apologize if it makes her happy, so am I the a-hole here? So yeah guys, I'm sharing this because OP posted this thinking that some people would take his side and understand, but practically everybody just tore into him guys, calling him the entitled a-hole. Like the guy thought his wife was the entitled one, nah. -uh. This person comments, you want to play video games instead of watching kids, and you're irritated by what your wife is making for dinner? And do you think that things like waking up in the middle of the night because she's puking are analogous to waking up in the night to puke? You are a major a-hole. Now, your wife needs to handle some things better, but this is a stupid way and a stupid plan to think that this will fix it. She's creating a living creature inside of her, and let me assure you, that stuff is way harder than what you have to do. My god, man. And this person says, garbage, lawn, and laundry do not come anywhere close to the amount of work it takes to cook and clean. You can get all that stuff done on a Saturday morning, whereas cooking has to happen every damn day. And it sounds like she does most of the child care. OP should switch all chores and responsibilities with his wife for a week and see how he likes it. So yeah guys, let me know what you think. I still can't get over the fact that OP said to his wife that they're both basically pregnant and he's got so much on his plate as well. Like, I'm pretty sure she doesn't have one or two hours to play video games a day, dude, because, you know, there's three other kids, so not even closer. But that, my friends, is r slash entitled people. Guys, let me know what you think. Do you agree or disagree that OP is an a-hole? If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash pro revenge episode where OP gets framed by his boss and gets fired and he goes scorched earth on the dude, ruining him. Go check it out if you haven't and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.